Hey everybody, this is John Buck, back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. This video is an example of using filtering with the Continuous Time Fourier series to find the output of passing a square wave through a low-pass filter. Uh, this video assumes you've already watched the video on the overview of filtering with the Continuous Time Fourier series. So if you haven't already seen that video, pause this one, go back and catch up with that, and then join us again here. But uh, for today's video, uh, or for this sort of continuing our discussion to show an example, this is my input signal x of t. So it's uh, height 1, and it goes uh, from minus 1 to 1, and then it repeats again over here. So the first thing we would do if we were going to find step 1 from our process, remember, was to find the a sub k's. The first thing we need to know is what's the period t, and using that, what's omega naught? So I want you to pause the video for a second and practice that on your own. Find the period, find omega naught, and then come back and check your answers against mine. Right in this video, oh, I'm sorry, for this signal then, the period is 8, right? It starts at minus 1, shows up again at 7. I've added 8 to it. From 1 to 9, right, I've added 8 to it. The middle, this is at 0. The middle, that one's at 8. A bunch of things you can check to find the period is 8. And then omega naught is 2 pi over the period, so 2 pi over 8 is pi over 4. So we would then use this in step 1 to find the Fourier series coefficients for the input, a sub k. So I would be using this analysis equation. I would plug in x of t. I, in this case, I've chosen my period to be the symmetric one because my signal is symmetric. That's always a good strategy when you have a signal that's even symmetric. Uh, and then I would go through and solve this integral, uh, breaking up the integral into different regions. I've already done a video showing one very similar to this, so I'm not going to do it all. I'm going to jump to the answer. I'm going to let you trust that my algebra skills are up to this and calculus skills. Because the main point of today's video is what is not that this is step one, getting to the a sub k's, is not the main point today. The main point is steps two and three. Once I have the input coefficients, a sub k, how do I find the output coefficients, and then how do I get to the output signal once I have those? So if I jump ahead on this, the a sub k would be the sine of pi over 4k pi over pi k. So it's a sinc function. Not surprising, right? Rectangle in one domain leads me to sinc in the other. If you want, you can pause the video here and practice your Fourier analysis skills. Do this one yourself and make sure you get the same answer I got. Okay, so there's my equation. When I'd solve this integral, I'd end up with the sine of pi over 4k over pi k. Uh, and if I plug in a couple of the values for that, just so we have the coefficients for later. So if I plug in k equals 0 and use a little Hopital's rule action, I get a quarter here. If I have k equals 1, I have sine of pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2 divided by pi, and the same thing at k equals minus 1. I'd have a, a negative from the numerator and denominator that cancel this out. So the sinc is an even function, so I, I'm not surprised to see the same thing for plus or minus 1. When k equals 2, this would be sine of pi over 2, <clears throat> right, sine of uh, pi over 2. Wait, I've made a mistake here. All right, well, I'm glad I caught that. little trig glitch there. Sine of pi over 2 is, is, is 1, and then I have 2, when k is 2, I have 2 pi in the denominator. Sine of my, for ne, k equals negative 2, I get minus 1 and a minus 2 in the denominator here. So either way, I get 1 over 2 pi. Uh, going on to k equals 3, I get root 2, minus root 2 over 6 pi. Because uh, uh, sine of, no, wait, I'm still making mistakes. Sorry about that. The sine is still positive here. So it would be uh, a root 2 over 6 pi. So sine of 3 pi over 4 is is plus root 2 over 2. And then when I put the k in the denominator, the, the 2 become 2 pi becomes 6 pi. And it goes on like that. Actually, k equals 4, it would be 0 again, plus or minus 4. It's not that important to have all these. We'll, we'll use some of them eventually. But this is basically jumping to step 1 of our process from last time. All right, so step 1 we, here, we have the a sub k's. I haven't shown you all the steps, but it's very similar to one I've done before. So now we're moving on to step 2. We're multiplying the a sub k with bk to get the output coefficients for each value of k. So let's see how that looks. So here's our filter. Again, it's important to remind ourselves that our omega naught is, is what we, uh, we use to decide how far apart we look on the omega axis. So our omega naught is pi over 4, and then to find the output coefficient for each value of k, we're going to plug in the same k, and I'm using the green to emphasize it here, 
And that involves evaluating H, we write this as the J omega axis, really. Right, so we write that as a function of omega. So for each value of k, for example, when, when k equals 0, uh, and I should mention I'm using the color here to help show you things. You don't need to use color like this on your homework. I'm just trying to emphasize that this is the same k on all three terms. So I'd go find, uh, write that, plug that in for the b term. Right, so setting all those k's equal to 0, if I sort of, this is just sort of a colon here to remind me which term I'm on, doing them one at a time. I have b sub 0 is a sub 0 times h of j 0 omega naught. So that's saying I'm going to go up here and look at, this is 0 times omega naught is 0. I'm going to evaluate h at that point. And so this h would be equal to 1, right? I see that on the graph that was given to me. I have to either be given that or I can find it from h of t. But many of these problems, you'll get a picture of the frequent, the plot. In this case, it's a low pass filter. And at omega equals 0, the height of that is 1. So that tells me that b naught is equal to a naught. Right? And that a naught was a quarter we saw on the previous page. Right? So for k equals 0, this is my a sub 0. And I plug that in, and I get b naught is equal to a quarter. I now just repeat this process with k equals 1, 2, and so on. Right? So for k equals 1, I get... I set all these k's equal to 1. I get b sub 1 is a sub 1 times a, the frequency response evaluated at 1 times omega naught, which is omega naught is pi over 4. So let me mark the graph where I'm looking now. Right, pi over 4 in this case would be, well, if this is 3 pi over 8, there's pi over 8. It would be right here, two divisions over. So again, the height here is 1. Here at this, this is at omega equals pi over 4 which is 1 times omega naught, and the amplitude is 1, and so this term here will again be 1. So that tells me the first harmonic also goes through with no change, so I get B1 is equal to A1. Then if I flip back to the uh, previous page, B1 is, uh, or A1 is root 2 over 2 pi, so let me use that value. Now I continue just using the next value of k. Maybe I'll use k equals minus 1 next, because looking ahead, I can see that will still be inside the filter passband, right? This section here, where the gain is not 0, we call the passband of the filter. This region out here, for this ideal filter where the gain is 0 everywhere, is the stop band. So let's do k equals minus 1 next. So replacing all of the, the k's by minus 1, I'll get b of minus 1 equals uh, a of minus 1 times h of j minus 1 times omega naught. So that minus 1 times omega naught, right, in this case, I'll put in my omega naught as pi over 4. And this term here, then, is, is evaluating this at minus pi over 4. And when I come up to my graph and do that, I'll be right here. Oh, I need my pen back. Right, this, is, this point here is at minus pi over 4. So again, it's still inside the passband, as I expected. So the gain there is reading off the graph. This value here is 1. So my, I replace this h by its value, which is 1. So b of minus 1 is also a of minus 1, which is, again, root 2 over 2 pi that I had found earlier. But before you get lulled into a false sense of security, it's time for a change. So let's look at what happens. We've now covered all the harmonics. This is the 0 harmonic the plus 1 and minus 1 harmonic. Let's look at what happens when I go to k equals 2. So now I've got same following the same pattern of replacing all the k's by 2. I get b sub 2 equals a sub 2 times h of j times 2 omega naught. Well, omega naught is pi over 4, so 2 times it is pi over 2. So that tells me go up to my graph and evaluate that function h at pi over 2. And when I do that, I say, oh, at pi over 2, the, the plot of h here is 0. Oh, I just realized this filter never got labeled. That was bad. Let me pause and fix that. So I should have had this labeled from the start, that this filter was, this was my filter h of j omega plotted as a function. Really, we just always say omega. We don't put a j there. Okay, so here's where the change is. This, the second harmonic, this is the k equals 2 term. Let me label that just to make it clear. Right, so something changed at the k equals 2 terms and that the, the, uh, the h, the frequency response, is now equal to 0. So if I go back down here to my equation, this term here, this h was 0. 
and so you know a2 times 0 is equal to 0 so the output coefficient b sub 2 will now be 0 in fact we can see from the picture the same thing will happen when k is minus 2 right if i go scroll up here when k is minus 2 i'll be looking at minus pi over 2 here and that will also be h at minus 2 h at minus pi over 2 is right here this is also 0 And so the, that coefficient will also be zeroed out in the output Fourier series. So let's go write that. Right, so that h of minus, this we just saw on the graph up above, this evaluated minus pi over 2 was also 0. In fact, as we scroll up and look at the graph, we can see that that pattern is going to repeat for everything from 2 upwards. If I go to k equals 3, that would be at 3 pi over 4 on the graph, which would be right here, still 0. k equals 4. I'd be out here, still 0 at pi, and it keeps going. Unlike discrete time, I need to actually do an infinite set of these. Right? So I need 5, 6, 7. I don't stop at pi and repeat. In continuous time, the frequency can go on forever, but they'll all be 0 in either direction. So all the outputs are going to be set to 0 by this filter. That's why we call it a low-pass filter. It kept the low frequencies, uh, removing the high ones. And so I can pull all this together and write out my Fourier series coefficients together in a fresh place. Let me do that. Right, so my b sub k's is a quarter when k equals 0, root 2 over 2 pi for k equals plus or minus 1, and 0 for all the other k's. So with that, that step, I've now finished, if I go back to my roadmap, I've finished step 2 here. I've got the b sub k's by multiplying. I'm going to stop this video here, and in the exciting sequel, We'll hear the conclusion of our story with step three. Okay, see you soon.